Wonder, 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 wonder. Welcome to the Senora Vibes Podcast. This is season 13, where your toughest questions meet the life-changing tips. We are here to give you some advice, talk about personal growth, some career transitions. I'm here to give you some uh, ideas on your wellness, how to handle relationships. Everything is covered in this podcast. Each episode gives you practical, actionable insights to help you navigate the life's challenges with confidence and convictions. This is season 13, and I'm so excited to have you here. We are embracing our Senora Era together. Tune in, ask away, send me every question you have, and let's start crafting the life you've always wanted. In this episode, this premiere episode, I am so um, excited to bring my favorite guest, my hubby, Rusk. Hello, thank you for having me back. You know you're my favorite guest. You know that you're my favorite. Thank you. It's been a while. You got injured, and so we had to take a temporary hiatus. So it has been six months since the last episode. I did do a summer check-in. So I want to talk a little bit about that summer check-in because that was right before I went into surgery. I told everybody about my injury, my ACL injury. And so I talked a little bit of what I was expecting to happen. But now I am three weeks post-surgery. So I definitely want to talk a little bit more about that because I think people have a lot of questions on like, how did you, how did it happen? What doctor did you find? How did you get, you know, how are you feeling? Are you doing better? Are you walking? And I think people have a lot of questions because I think they're kind of used to me just going, 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 doing, doing, and always, you know, posting photos, doing my fashion check-ins. Like I love fashion. And I think people are just wondering, like, how are you managing this craziness right well, now how are you managing it? <laughs> I know how you manage it. I see you 24 hours seven days a week I, like you know, I have all the access and I'm privy to all of the good days the bad days you, the horrible days you and, are privy to all of that oh, yeah. I think about Sonia Morgan from the New York Housewives and she, no not Sonia Morgan Sonia and Dorinda Dorinda Sonia asked her how she was doing and Dorinda said not well bitch not well, <laughs> I think that's very appropriate for you right so, now so I think that's not probably well. me you know it is I mean so Ugh. let's talk about how it happened to you yeah let's talk about it, it so was, I think it was June uh, July 9th right? okay so it was the day after barrel yeah, came through right. We didn't have, uh, well, we did have electricity, but my sister didn't. So she was having, you know, just the family over for pool. It's a summer and we're having fun. We're drinking, we're enjoying ourselves, we're dancing. And uh, <laughs> one thing led to another. Yeah. And I'm on the floor with my knees on top of me because yes, I'm right. dancing quebradita and I'm thinking, I can totally carry her. Yes. I can't. Yeah. And boom, right. my knee is busted. Yeah, all of a sudden. I didn't actually see the incident, but I all of a sudden I saw you on the floor and I didn't think much of it. I just thought you just somewhat fell down and you were limping back to the pool. I couldn't walk. Literally, I couldn't walk. I thought I had broken something. Okay. But I felt the pop. You felt the pop. Yeah. And people say that you can hear it. Yes. But I didn't hear it. The music was too loud. Right. So you felt it, which was probably even worse. Mm. And uh, yeah, and you mentioned that, and then all of a sudden, like I think 15, 20 minutes later, we're going home, and I'm texting uh, our doctor. We have a direct primary care doctor named we do. Dr. Sonia Singh, which by She's the way amazing. is a great business model, and it's up and coming in mm-hmm. the field of medicine. And I highly recommend forking out the $150, $200 a month because you have direct, direct access care. to a general uh, family practitioner. At any time of the day. At any time of the day. There's no nurses, there's no scheduling. It's an app and you get a board certified Stanford educated doctor and she has all the networks to all the specialists recommend. She can handle all right. the blood work for you and test. It's, it's fantastic. Anyway, we're texting her on the way home and, and telling her we're probably going to the ER. And, yeah. And uh, she says, well, the wait's gonna be a long time at the ER for something like this. Right. Uh, it's not life threatening. Um, I know. I'd be there for three to four hours, so I had pivoted and said, "Let's go home." I said, "We can probably just put ice through the whole." We did. Uh, rise thing, you know, rest, ice, compression, elevation. Yes. And that's what we did, and probably was the smarter thing to do than sit there 
in the emergency room for mm. two to three hours in pain, uncomfortable in one of those seats. It's probably exactly what they would have done anyways, with the exception of probably giving you a painkiller to kind yeah. of alleviate the pain. No, and but I think we made the base, the best decision. decision. So yeah. we, we went home and, and, and then I had uh, contacted an old client of mine from the shop. His name is Dr. Houston Barali, yes, like the city of Houston. And uh, he's an orthopedic surgeon, I remember. And I actually remember this guy when he was a kid, back as, we go way back when he was a teenager, he was lifting weights, he was bodybuilding, and yeah. he went off to medical school. Young he, doctor. Young doctor, and then he, mm-hmm. then he disappeared for several years while he did his residency somewhere on the East Coast, I think it was Florida. And I just remember last minute, so let me, let me contact him. Dr. Singh had recommended an ortho, but I said I felt something better with somebody I had actually known right. since he was a kid. Yeah. And he was a great personality. I actually hadn't gone to see him when I banged up my knee. Luckily for me, I had nothing but just a little pain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No injuries. And he said that he looked at it. He thought it was a torn ACL <laughs> or torn ligament, an MCL. And he says, we got to do an MRI. And he reckoned that he doesn't do ACL repairs. He doesn't anymore. do repairs, yeah. Okay. So he recommended a guy named uh, Mufadel Gombera, which we have heard later is one of the premier doctors yeah. in this area for this particular type of injury. And he was fantastic. He's actually a professor. He teaches on this particular subject. And he did a great job. We, we met him the next day, set up an appointment. He did a lot of painful movements with your knee. You know what? I thought I had broken something. I thought I had broken your kneecap. Yeah, I thought I had broken my kneecap. I knew something wasn't right. I knew it because when I got up, I couldn't walk. So for me, it was just like I knew something was not right. Something was definitely wrong. Of course, you're having fun. You're enjoying yourself. You're trying not to, you know, think the worst case scenario. But in the back of my mind or my intuition said it was the worst case scenario and my intuition was correct it really was so an ACL tear so let's talk about what an ACL is it's the anterior cruciate cruciate ligament cruciate ligament right so it's one of the key ligaments that helps you stabilize your knee joint it helps you connect the thigh bone the femur to the shin bone the tibia so when that happens like it's like a lot of athletes have that happen, you yeah. know, because a lot of them. Yeah, it's under a lot of strain and duress. Exactly. So it's a very complex mm-hmm. thing and it's very much inside so what happened the to knee. You're not an athlete. <laughs> Somebody just you? fell on my knee <laughs> and busted it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's really the end of it. But I don't think it was more than that. Mm-hmm. So it really was. So we got our x rays. Mm-hmm. Dr. Brawley did an x ray. He right, saw yeah. it, yep. Yeah. And then he said, well, I see, I think there might be more to it. So then he sent us to the MRI. So we went to the MRI the next day, right. which, by the way, again, direct care, a primary care doctor. Yeah, well, we were she, able to right. get in right away because she's, she organizes, you know, she organizes everything for you. So we didn't have you to go through any of that. We don't have insurance, by the way, right. at this point. We have it now, but we didn't have it back then. Right. So. Yeah, and the, uh, she had organized all of it and sent in the order. We just showed up. MRI. Uh, got the copy of the MRI on a CD, took that CD with us to meet Dr. Gambara later uh, the next morning. And, and uh, he did his little test on your knee, which was actually, I think, something you need to talk about because he twisted it, turned it, bent it in very painful ways that actually made me feel sorry for you. And I'm not a very sympathetic uh, person. It's not part of my personality, but it seemed like yeah. you were in a lot of pain. But he was doing his test and he said, you, your ACL is torn. Yeah, it was completely and, ruptured. He, uh, completely ruptured. And then uh, he also thought that maybe you might have had some damage to your meniscus. Yes. He found out later on to be true while he operated. Yeah. So Dr. Gambera, which who was recommended from Dr. Brawley, he definitely saw something more when he went in there. But, okay, so what was the the, the schedule? My accident happened July 9th. Right. We went in to see Dr. Brawley on the 10th. Right. We went to see Dr. Gambera on the 12th. On the 12th. After that, he says, we definitely need to schedule you for a surgery. Yes. A lot of people don't schedule their surgeries right away because number one, they know there's a lot of pain. Right. Number two, it puts you out. Like you can't do a lot of things for, for a good, while. For a good month. Yeah, for, right. for at least a month, right? right? At least you know now. Which we, exactly. And so we knew all of that and Dr. Gambera was like really clear about what was gonna happen for me. Of course, being me, being you, who we are as people, we're like, we're going to do it. We're going to do it immediately. Like, we're not even going to wait. We're not even going to 
think about it. Said, We're what, doing what surgery. What is the next available date? Yeah. That's, that's what I had asked on the phone <laughs> when his scheduling assistant had called. And she said, when, can, when do you guys want to do it? I said, as soon as available date. And it happened to be August 6th. I said, great, because we were on our way out of the country for a trip that we had booked. For my birthday, by the way. Birthday. And I didn't cancel any of my birthday. No, and I didn't think you would, and I've known you for 25 <laughs> years, and I didn't even cross my mind that we were canceling that. We pulled off the trip. You know, it's not life threatening. Babe, but people were saying, why are you still doing the yeah, things? Right. Yeah, we got, we got and a lot of that. For me, right. it's like, why am I not going to do it? Why am I going to cancel yeah, because, my life and well, everything I want to do? It wasn't life-threatening. It wasn't a stroke. It wasn't a heart attack. Exactly. It wasn't like, you know, some open heart surgery. It was just that uh, you had a banged up knee. And the good thing is you got two legs. And uh, so you can use your other leg. Right. Exactly. You so. walk on one leg. <laughs> I know. Because really says you need two. Oh, my God. Okay, so that's that happened. And so... There is a protocol for like pre-surgery. You just have to do like a lot of stretching and just like try to stay off the leg as much as possible. I didn't do any of that just because I just had so many things going on. So I just continued my life, yep. basically. Yeah, and we, we started learning during this two to three weeks. There's actually a lot of people we know that had uh, an ACL or MCL or meniscus operation. We just, it was never disclosed or was just never talked about or was... It was way before we knew each other, and a lot of them had, like you had mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. postponed the operation mm -hmm. because they just didn't want to go through the pain. So the, the thing is about the ACL is it's not necessary that you have to have it repaired. Right. What we had learned, it just helps in the long run uh, to, to prevent from your knee deteriorating worse. Correct, yeah. Because you're going to most likely, what the doctors, both doctors, Barali and Gavera, had told us, is that your knee will, will be unstable and you're going to beat it up more and you're going to end up with a full knee replacement so you're kind of back to square one anyways right and it's hard to do a full knee replacement when you have a torn acl you are going to have to do the acl yeah. first and then they're going to have to do the knee so it's almost like you're doing two operations so it's it's kind of inevitable it's yeah you probably need it but everybody's different and and uh so for me the reason why i wanted to do my surgery and the reason why i did not think that i could just keep going with a torn acl is because Number one, I have a very active lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I really love to work out. Yeah. I love to have fun. I love to dance. I love to party. I love to do things that are active. I don't want to be home. And I'm not an older lady where I could like literally just like lay around and just watch novelas all day, right? Yeah. So for me, it was so important that I get it done, get it over yeah. with, and move on because at the end of the day you have to think about where you want your life to go where do you want your life to your lifestyle to to continue i want my lifestyle to continue you and i have trips already planned through 2025 we have so many things we still want to do we still have things that we need to i mean things to see and so in order for me to be able to do all those things, I need a healthy knee to be able to go up and down stairs. I couldn't go up and down the stairs with the torn ACL. It was very hard. I did do a little dancing at my knees quinceanera, but it was very uncomfortable. And at the same time, I had two moments where I fell. Yes. Actually, I fell. I buckled, my knee right. buckled, and I fell down. Yes. Right. Right. Not, not that long after you had damaged your ACL prior to surgery. Yes. I had some friends over at the house. We did, we yeah. A weekend dinner, uh, an evening dinner, sorry, and and you were just walking from the kitchen right next to the dining room table, and all of a sudden I turn around and you're on the floor, and then, um, and like you said, you're it buckled. buckled. And then we were at a birthday party for yeah. our niece at your sister's house, and you were by the pool, almost literally about fifteen feet from <laughs> where the original incident happened. <laughs> literally, and then once again, literally I turn the around, same place. And you're on the floor again. <laughs> And you know what? We were joking. We were playing around. We were being silly. And my brother just tapped me. Just a little tap. Yeah, yeah. And that was it. And that was it. I was on the floor because my knee buckled. So I knew surgery was the best case scenario because I definitely want to continue just having my life, you know? I love what we do, right. our travels, all of that. So Anyway, so you got to, we, you got to August 6th. We got to August 6th, which was our day for our surgery. Right. Um, Early morning surgery, the best. That way you get to go home in the afternoon. Early morning. Yeah. Operation was about 90 minutes. Yeah. From the time they had kicked me out of the operating room. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to the Fondren um, Hospital, Orthopedic Hospital, because they were super organized. They had everything ready. The moment 
from check-in yeah. to anesthesia. Yes, right. Which, by the way, they give you a whole block for your leg. Right. <laughs> it's general anesthesia, so yeah, right. they do they do that. No, they did a fantastic job. And my father, who's almost in his nineties now, yeah, has had his share of surgeries over the years, and he is not a big fan of modern day medicine. He's always complaining about the doctor here, the yeah. surgeon there. But this one particular hospital, Fonda Orthopedic Group on Main Street, yeah, uh, Gumbera, Brawley, um, he actually is fond of them. Uh, yeah, one, they're great. They did a good job, and two, the hospital food for post surgery for his knee was actually yeah. good, and that's what he remembers the most. Yeah. So it's it's a great place if if you have an injury to consider getting an operation, you know, an orthopedic operation taken uh, into consideration. But anyways, October six rolled around. You had your o operation. August. I'm oh, sorry, August six. Yeah. And uh, ninety minutes. Yes. And you were done. You came in uh, to the uh, post op room. I, I had visited you and. Spoke with the doctor. That's when he had told us that you had also damaged your meniscus. That he had fixed it mm -hmm. uh, while he was in there. Nice of him. Appreciate it that we didn't have to come back twice to do the same. Exactly. Job. And it was uh, good to see. We went home at two o'clock in the afternoon. We arrived at seven a.m. and and that's when all the pain started. And so they prescribed to you. Wow. They prescribed to you hydrocodone, aspirin, and a muscle relaxer, methylcarbinol and nothing seemed to work. Those, so those first 48 to 72 hours was excruciating for you. If I could go and back I think we the dosage a little bit. We did. We changed some pain meds a, while, a no, few we, times. No, I think we, they, you know, they recommended one every few hours. I think you were taking two every few hours. But we were kind of worried about the dependency that might transpire uh, from taking. But then but then didn't but the pain was no, so bad. But didn't. the pain is so bad that you don't you don't feel relief at all. I think the only time you feel relief is when you have those mm -hmm. ice packs numbing. And so I think at one point I had three ice packs, one at the bottom of, of the knee in the back of the knee and then two on the top, right? So that was, and honestly, babe, if I could just delete in my head or just like, like erase those days, I would erase them. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I, I don't want to remember that. I don't want to think about it anymore. But if anybody's going through this, if anybody's going through ACL or any type of surgery, especially in your leg when you're like walking or trying to do your activities, like this is one of the things that I feel like it's so important that we we think about. Like we can go through the pain and go through the craziness now, or. Uh, just continue to suffer through the consequences. So, okay, the coping, let's talk about a little bit about the coping and what, what that was like. So the first few days I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't move, I couldn't function. I barely got out of bed. You're not supposed to wash your leg for a few days, like at least two days, right? So you can't even take a shower. After those two days, you do take your shower, you remove your bandage, all of that. And so, um, being dependent on other people is super hard for me because I don't like being dependent on anybody. So that for me is something that like was the hardest thing and having somebody come in and like help me shower, help me dress, put my shoes on for me. Like I couldn't even do that. So I was getting help taking showers, putting my shoes on. So all that stuff. So, okay. So that was post-surgery. The pain was excruciating. I couldn't sleep. Um, I couldn't function at all. I was like in a fog, I think for the first week. Uh, I know that you insisted on me getting up and doing things. I just couldn't, I just yeah. couldn't walk. I just couldn't get myself up. Uh, oh, physical yes. therapy needed to be scheduled right away though. That was something you did, right? Yes, well, you know me, I, I want this shit done, not now or tomorrow, but yesterday. And I'm actually trying to set up the physical therapy while you're in operation. <laughs> uh, I was calling the insurance trying to get who's who. And I did. I, I love I, I, you. I already had the information ready. Yeah. As soon as you got out, I just wanted to consult with the uh, Dr. Cabrera and find out if uh, he approved of it. And he said, just get it done no matter where you're getting it done. Physical therapy is important. What we learn is that a lot of people don't get the physical therapy. And the recovery is a lot longer. And yes. You, and uh, you not only is the recovery a lot longer, but sometimes you don't heal properly. And that's the... Uh, the key is that it's important to get the PT uh, as soon as possible. And Gobera had actually suggested three days later, that Friday, 
and we were like, okay, I just, I rolled with right. that. But you were in so much pain those first 40 hours. I was like, I don't want anybody touching me right now. So yeah. I had, I had to reschedule Friday to, first of all, it was, actually it was Thursday. And then I rescheduled to Friday, and then I called Friday. I said, I got to schedule Monday, and the PT clinic is getting a noise, and he can't reschedule again. I said, listen, my wife's in a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. And she goes, well, and that guy, I remember saying, the reception says, well, she has to push through. I said, yes. I said, but have, have you had it done? And he says, well, no. But I said, okay, well, then. Yeah, said, like, said, yeah, she, don't say that. She just had a pretty invasive procedure. You know what, baby? But, they say that it's not invasive and it's very it is, invasive because it's, it's four holes right. that they're drilling yeah, just because they're through not, your knee. They're not splitting your chest open for open heart Exactly. Is it, it's still you're going deep inside right. the body part. It's not on the surface. And it was it was bad for you. So we finally got you in there Monday. And then you've been doing physical therapy two times a week since yeah. then. And it's, you've been making substantial progress every day that you go there. Yeah, I, now, now, I'm just looking at you now and you're able to bend your knee. I'm you bending my knee. Myself. I wasn't able to bend it. Um, I couldn't drive for a while. There were so many things I just couldn't do. I couldn't walk even through my house. I couldn't shower. Thankfully, we have a little seat in the shower that I can sit at and like shower that way. But I don't know how other people do it without the support. I really don't. And like they, everybody's asking, well, how's, how are you doing? Like, are you, is your mental health okay? And I'm like, I'm a pretty healthy, uh, mentally healthy person, you right? You could be a little cuckoo sometimes. I know, I could be a little dramatic, I know, I know. But, like, this really took me to another place. If I allow it, it could really take me to a really dark place because, number one, it interferes with my lifestyle. My lifestyle is fast, it's moving, it's um, my kids, my work, I'm a real estate agent, I'm showing I'm showing houses. I got up after five days of surgery and went to show a house that we just recently finished for, uh, for possible tenants. Thankfully, those tenants worked out. I didn't have to show the house anymore. They were perfect for the house, but, but nurses, I was still, nurses. and they were nurses, both right. of them, yeah. One was on the Moral Army, the other one had done the wound care. And I remember when we you tried to get a, a, some, you tried to exude some sympathy out of one of them. Yeah. I told him you had torn your ACL. He's like, I'm not sympathizing with you. What I see every single day, it's like it's just, I know. This is the dime a dozen. So, so I was up. I was still trying to work. I was still trying to do my things. Um, I'm still trying to function as a normal person, but. You can't function as a normal person. Number one, you have to worry about like how far you park. You have to worry about stairs, if there's um, elevators. Any nutrition and wellness, no, there's really, you really can't eat. There's just, the medicine just doesn't help. You feel nauseous. Um, you're not eating like you used to. Nothing tastes good. It's just a really shitty place to be in. It really is. Um, support system, just find the best family support. Um, really follow up with your doctor. Go get your physical therapy. We found physical therapy. How do we find them, by the way? Well, I was working on that, like I had said, during your operation. I had gone to the insurance. I had contacted them, asked them for a list of uh, PT specialists that they recommend, that, that they uh, are in at work, and so they sent them. I found one that had good reviews and that was close by to where we lived to make it convenient. Because, you know, from a practical standpoint, yeah, I knew that at some point you probably want to drive there yourself and to make it, you know, just convenient for you. Right. But it's, uh, I think, I, you know. At the end of the day, when you want to have a surgery like this, it's like, what are your goals in your life? Are you okay to have that, um, that lifestyle um be paused or are you willing to just continue just so many people just have these different goals for their life for me my long-term goal was just to go back to the activities that i love to do i love working out i love dancing i love partying i love to travel all those things are compromised if i can't you know continue with this leg in my my torn acl and, you know, just for other people that are going through something like this, for me and the advice that I have is just find the support, find people that can help you through it. 
Um, if you don't have that, reach out to me. I will give you some pointers. I'll give you some ideas on what you can do for that. We, I think for us and where we are now, three, maybe almost four weeks post-surgery, we're grateful that we did it. We're yeah, glad that we did it. It didn't, it, didn't dawn, it didn't dawn on us or not that we didn't, that we were not going to do it. It was going to get done. And that's the, uh, that's just the way it is. It's, there's no, there's no reason to postpone it or procrastinate. It's something, it's a freak accident. It happens like any other accident. You just have to address it head on. We're working with a physical therapist that's been working out for us. It's been great. We've been going to them at least two times a week. And so one of the things that I'm working on right now is just like bending my knee because I can't bend it very well. But I just want to like encourage everybody who has questions on how this journey was or what to expect. If you have somebody going through it or if you're going through something like that, like I want to hear from you. I want to know what questions you have because I feel like um, I didn't have much of a support system in terms of like other people outside of my family. Um, some people did tell me they were like, oh, you're going to just go through a lot of pain. But I don't think that it was like um, very detailed oriented. They just said, get ready for it. Yeah. And well, yeah, it's, you're going to suffer. Yeah. And, I think and that was it. I don't think there was much detail that was necessary to be delineated in this particular pain. The, the pain was just the overall uh, holistic pain that you had all over your, the front of your knee, the back of your knee, the whole area around the knee was painful and, and you just have to stick it out. The pain meds, I don't know, I'm not a doctor or a pharmacist, but I think um, the hydrocodone and the Percocet they have given you seems to be diluted or doesn't have the concentration mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or intensity that it had before, mm -hmm. probably because of the uh, opioid crisis that we had and the surgery, addiction and yeah and all that and uh, so it doesn't seem to help right and you have to be careful not to take too much of this you don't become dependent on it and which wasn't your case the pain was kind of uh, excruciating and then you find out from friends and other family that have had ACL or the kids have had it from soccer or basketball or whatever mm -hmm. that they've had uh, equal amount of pain or greater amount of pain themselves and pain meds didn't help either so that's just yeah best thing to do what we have learned um, from yes. Primera is to lift weights yeah uh, I'm not disagreeing with Pilates or, or any of those deals but to lift weights and to strengthen your mus musculoskeletal mm -hmm. area around your body in general especially around your joints and it helps to stabilize those right. particular joints to prevent you from having this kind of injury. Of course, that's not always the case. Um, injuries still happen to professional athletes, but they're under constant duress. We're talking about average normal people. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's the best way to prevent those injuries is to have good muscle development. Yeah, and I feel like because I did have a, a really healthy um, workout routine before my, my injury, I think that's been helping me a lot because I, I'm walking, I'm driving, um, a lot of people don't do that until like maybe a month or a month and a half after. And I'm already doing that because I already feel comfortable doing that. And so my physical therapist said, it's not, as soon as you can, like start walking on your leg, start putting um, weight on it. You know, they say not to do weight bearing, but for me, in terms of like my, my meniscus being torn, like it was the best thing for me to do is just to go in and definitely um, and I'm not, and you didn't work it out as I'm much as I can. I'm not going to go over there and hand you everything all the time. I'm going to make you get up and go to the kitchen and go get your own stuff. From time to time, I'll, I'll chime in, but the faster you recover, the better off you'll obviously be. It's short-term pain for long-term gain. And, you know, the, the longer, the longer yeah. you prolong the short-term pain, the longer it's going to take you to get the long-term pain. You know, Rusk, we've always had this kind of mentality since we were together 25 years ago that we work hard and we play hard. And I think the play hard came in, came in, came, came, came in hard, really hard this time around. Um, and I'm, I'm willing to take the L. I'm willing to take the L. I know that that's, that's it. I think we, we forgot to mention this. The ACL is from a cadaver. That yeah, from, yeah, the replacement. From a cadaver, replacement, we, the replacement ACL. ACL from a cadaver. And what we learned was it actually comes from a much younger body, somewhere between 18 and 32. Yes. So you've now improved your ACL situation. You fast forwarded uh, that by at least a minimum of 17 years. So you much you now have a longer ACL. So 
the chance of re tearing is less likely now. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have the other knee as well. So you don't have to you don't have to pro prohibit doing any kind of extraneous activity once you're fully mm -hmm. healed because mm -hmm. you now have a younger ACL. I said, well, what what you need to do is you have to start lifting weights. Uh, to make sure the other ACL doesn't tear, and also to make sure that the new ACL doesn't tear down the road either. I know, but don't you think there's a learning lesson in this? Like that, I no. need to stop being so. I, I need to stop going so hard on you know, everything that I do. Well, like I feel like well, you, the universe sent me a, a. You were dancing. You weren't doing anything hard. You were having fun. I know. This wasn't from something that you were extraneous. Or that I was, yeah. That you were. Your body says. Uh, you can only run a mile and you started running a marathon. You didn't mm -hmm. do that. You can go from, you, you can push to the extreme. You were simply dancing and it was just a freak accident. And I don't think you should yeah. that. I know Russ says like, oh, it's fine. You're fine. You're fine. In my mind and in, in the back of my head, I'm like, no, it's, I need to definitely be more careful and just be more cautious about whatever I'm doing because I don't want to go through this again. This is something that I never, never want to, feel ever again I don't want to wish this on anybody the pain is intense it's crazy it's excruciating however coming out of it on the other side now the fog has has almost been lifted for me so I I'm feeling good I'm feeling good I'm not going to say that I'm 100% yet I'm not 100% yet I'm hoping to be 100% at some point they say maybe what three months what percentage she said three months right now I'm probably like 75 okay. I feel like 75 what? maybe it's what's going on in three weeks. yeah pretty substantial the doctor and says the you're not going to feel 100 until like maybe six months six months right and he says no, no extraneous maybe activity. so you're now right. talking February of 2025 and that's the date that you should put in your mind that you're going to be able to uh, re-engage full exercise activities. You guys, I'm going to be 50 in July. I am pre preparing myself for my 50th birthday. I want to be at my top-notch level. So yeah. <laughs> I got to get to work. Yeah, that's your goal. <laughs> that's your goal. So I want to hear from you. Have you gone through this? Have you encountered something like this before? Has somebody that you love encountered something like this? I want to know, like, what's going on? Give me some advice. Give me some tips on how I can I feel better, come out of it. I do my affirmations every day. I really do. I talk to myself about how I'm coming out of it. I'm getting better. I count my lucky stars. I tell myself that there's people that are out there and have it worse. And so for me right now, it's like definitely just feeling happy and excited that I'm recuperating. I'm coming out of my fog. Honestly, that pain is just unbearable sometimes, but being able to manage it, I think, is 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 my key right now. It's the, the goal for me right now. I'm heading myself back to work. I'm doing my real estate. I'm doing my teaching, um, podcasting again. So I'm here and I'm trying to keep going and just continue my life as Fantastic. it is. I'm proud of you. And thank you for being my nurse. Mm -hmm. You're the best nurse ever, honey. You yes. really are. I think we've exhausted all those ice packs in the freezer. <laughs> yeah, when I'm like in the in middle the freezer, of the night, the one p one a.m. in the morning. Like <laughs> night to one a.m. in the morning, and I'm like, I did need another ice, ice pack. Last night? I did, yeah. I did. I there went through. Like I went to three of them. Well, because it was in the blankets. Oh, okay. But I went through three ice packs last okay. night. I thought I had only put four in there. I only saw three in the deal. Yeah, you, you probably used maybe two. Yeah. So I did, and so thank you for that. And so I'm super um, pumped about you know what's happening for fall 2024. A lot of great things. Stay in touch. Listen to the podcast. If you've gotten um, somebody or you know somebody that could really learn from this or really go through um, some motivation and inspiration from this podcast, please share it with them. This is what this is about. It's about sharing um, what we've gone through and how we encounter life's challenges you know, social media has a great way of showing you the best. There's a lot of stuff that's going on in the background and behind the scenes. It's not so good. So I definitely want to just remind you guys of that and just let you know that, yeah, we put our best foot out there, but there's a lot of other things that are going on in the back of, of the scene. So there's a support system out there. And so really reach out. And if we could give you some advice, if we can give you some pointers on how we've encountered these challenges, 
because all of us have these challenges. Nobody goes through life without challenges. And so it's about how you confront them and how you come out of them, right? How do you um, supersede whatever is coming your way? And this was a challenge that happened. And so for me, I'm trying to figure out where I go next and what I do next getting my, my knee brace, getting myself, you know, my crutches and just not feeling so shitty about myself. That's where I want to go. So thank you so much for being here, Brasca. I appreciate you. You're welcome, sweetie. I love you. I love you too. And so guys, just reach out. Podcast at Instagram, Senora Vibes Podcast, and also at the underscore Alicia E. You can find me there. Reach out. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Facebook. Thank you guys, and I hope this helps some of you. Appreciate you all. Love you.